The pandemic has brought us to a new reality of food products running out of stock. And although I know there are other basic necessities that would be more worrying if they ran out, it honestly really ruins my day when I do my groceries and Yakult is out of stock. Yakult is a fermented probiotic slash bioactive yogurt drink that originates from Japan. It is incredibly popular in Asia, is present in over 38 countries, and at least 40 million bottles of Yakult are consumed every single day. And before anything else, I'll just get this out of the way. I live in the Philippines and ever since we have been pronouncing the brand name differently here. But after watching Yakult commercials for the US, UK, Ireland, India, and Singapore markets, and hearing all of them pronounce it as Yakult, whereas in the Philippines, the commercials here say it as Yakult, for the sake of consistency, I'm just gonna say Yakult as we go along. Anyway, here in the Philippines, it's pretty normal to see groceries put up signs that tell people to limit their Yakult purchases to only two packs. So this struck me because even during a period of uncertainty that a once-in-a-generation pandemic brings, are people really spending their limited cash on packs of Yakult to the point where people are complaining that they have run out of stock once again? I mean, there has to be a lot of brand love between Yakult and its customers. And after doing some research, it seems fitting considering that the reason why Yakult was created in the first place was due to concern, empathy, and well, love coming from its founder. Yakult was created by Dr. Minoru Shirota. Dr. Shirota was born in 1899 in rural Nagano, Japan. Ever since he was young, he's always dreamed of becoming a doctor. And during that time, Japan was yet to be the wealthy, first world country we now know today. Back then, especially in Nagano, a lot of the people were suffering from poverty. And a lot of children were weakening as they could not afford nutritious meals. Among the causes of death of a poverty-stricken population is dysentery, digestive system-related infections due to poor hygiene and nutritional deficiencies. This caused an outbreak of illnesses in the country. Determined to find a way to beat the diseases that are taking such a toll on the nation, Dr. Shirota began conducting research on microorganisms in the hopes of developing some sort of preventive medicine. Eventually, it led him to discover good bacteria that fought off bad bacteria, causing typhus and dysentery. He soon discovers that lactic acid bacteria suppress the growth of harmful bacteria in the intestine. By 1930, Dr. Shirota receives his doctorate in medicine after he managed to successfully culture and strengthen a strain of lactic acid bacteria. It was a remarkable achievement since this bacteria could survive the journey to the intestines that eventually led to a healthier stomach. This would give people a bigger chance of fighting off illnesses that were ravaging the population. Rightly so, this bacteria was named as the Lactobacillus casei shirota. The next challenge for Dr. Shirota was how to get this to as many people as possible. The first option was via injections, but this would have proved to be a difficult task, would require a lot of capital, and would take a lot more time. So he got more creative and thought, why not put it into a drink? One that tasted good and one that people could afford. And so in 1935, five years after the discovery of the Lactobacillus casei Shirota, Yakult was introduced to the market in Japan. And as to the name Yakult, it isn't actually Japanese. It comes from the word Yahurto, which means yogurt in the Esperanto language. During that time, Esperanto was believed to become an international language common to all people. But that didn't really happen. Now things were going well for Dr. Shirota. In 1939, he launched the Shirota Research Center, he got married, and moved to Kyoto to start a family. But then, things took a turn for the worse because World War II happened. Dr. Shirota was brought in to serve as a doctor in the Imperial Japanese Army. In 1941, his wife, unfortunately, passed away. Despite the hardships, Dr. Shirota remained committed to making sure that Yakult reaches as many people as possible. And so during the war, Yakult prices were lowered so that more people could afford it. Yakult resumed operations in 1950, and in 1955, the Yakult Research Institute, which is Yakult's headquarters, was established in Tokyo, Japan. Now we know about what Yakult did to get started, but what's even more amazing is what it needed to do to grow so big. The company wanted to reach every single household, and what more practical way to do so than direct sales? Yakult launched the Yakult Lady Home Delivery System a sales force composed only of women who were tasked to go door-to-door, neighborhood-to-neighborhood, and sell bottles of fresh Yakult to each household, visiting each one weekly and sometimes even daily. Yakult ladies go around visiting offices, private homes, stopping by people who may want a drink. 
they are cherished as the face of the company. And Yakult particularly chose women in order to give housewives a chance to earn supplemental income. And it's actually become a popular job option amongst moms. In fact, the company even set up around 1,200 daycare centers across Japan so that mothers working as Yakult ladies could leave their kids in safe hands as they did their rounds. And these women are committed. A Yakult lady undergoes three months of training before they're allowed to go out on their own. New employees are also required to go on refresher training in 6, 9, and 12 month intervals. A typical day for Yakult ladies begins in the morning where they drop by Yakult distribution centers and stock up on supplies. They typically carry around 20 to 30 kilograms of Yakult in their daily load and travel either by foot, bikes, or nowadays scooters. I've read an answer from Quora from people who have experience being sold to by Yakult ladies. They said that they were very insistent and one particular Yakult lady would visit regularly at least once or twice a week and wouldn't leave until the customer has received and paid for the pack of Yakult. For new customers who are not familiar with the product, the Yakult lady would explain its health benefits for the intestinal tract. One of the main reasons why Yakult has grown so big is because of the Yakult lady system. And every time the company expands to a new country, Yakult ladies are deployed. The impact of Yakult ladies lies in the personal connections they create with each customer. Once a Yakult lady frequents a location, the community starts to know her by her name, and she knows their order by heart. Not only that, since the value of Yakult requires educating customers about the benefits of probiotic drinks, these face-to-face -face interactions with a representative of the company allows Yakult to somehow function as health advisors. The Yakult Lady system is a fantastic way for Yakult to introduce its product to a new market. But despite the success of this system in Asian countries, it doesn't always work. One example is Australia. When Yakult entered Australia in 1994, the first English-speaking country it entered, the Yakult Lady system was rolled out. Problem was, Australians weren't comfortable with the idea of a strange woman visiting them regularly to sell them fermented milk. The system only lasted for 10 years until it was scrapped. But in Japan, India, Brazil, Mexico, and Southeast Asian countries, Yakult ladies are thriving. The system worked so well in Japan that it gave Yakult the confidence to expand overseas, entering Taiwan in 1964, a year after the system was introduced. Today, around the world, there are around 46,000 Yakult ladies making their rounds. Now let's talk about the Yakult bottles. Initially, since its introduction, Yakult was sold in glass bottles. You can just imagine how challenging that was for a Yakult lady to go around with loads of these glass bottles. But in 1968, Yakult decided to make a switch to plastic bottles. One of the primary reasons for the switch was to reduce the load of the Yakult ladies and to eliminate the need to collect empty glass bottles. The switch to plastic also made it easier for automated filling in Yakult's factories and lower transport costs because of their lightweight material. Yakult tapped Isamu Kenmochi, a Japanese furniture designer, to create the signature shape of the Yakult bottles. The inspiration of the bottle was from a Kokeshi doll. Kokeshi dolls are small, a bit round along the edges, and they look really cute. And most importantly, Kokeshi dolls are a symbol of good luck. And well, I guess it worked since the switch to plastic bottles actually made a significant increase in sales for Yakult. And though they may vary in size, the Yakult bottles we see today still follow the original 1968 design. When did you know that Yakult has a skincare line? Not only that, the company also has a presence in the pharmaceuticals industry and they produce coffee, milk, instant noodles, and even soap. Turns out, the Lactobacillus casei Shirota was not only good for the gut, it was also good for the skin. Yakult's skincare line offers different kinds of moisturizers that contain the same probiotics that keep our digestive tract healthy. And for distribution and sales, it relies on Yakult Beauty Advisors, its version of the Yakult Ladies. But although the skincare line has been doing well in Japan, it's not doing as well as it should abroad. Yakult Brazil tried venturing into it, but it performed well below expectations and was forced to close down after 10 years of losses. And although the same Yakult is available all around the world, there are slight variations in some countries. For instance, in Australia, Europe, India, New Zealand, Indonesia, and Vietnam, 
The bottles are in smaller 62 ml bottles. In the Philippines, the US, Brazil, and a couple other, the bottles are in 80 ml bottles. And in China, Hong Kong, Taiwan, and Singapore, Yakult is produced in larger 100 ml bottles. There has been a lot of demand for bigger bottles of Yakult, but the brand insists that Yakult was never meant to be consumed in large quantities. A pack of Yakult, which is 5 bottles, was meant to be consumed every day for 5 days, and not all 5 in one go. Which, I have to admit, is exactly what I have been doing ever since. The reason why it's in small bottles is due to the fact that leaving a bottle unfinished is susceptible to contamination, which compromises the quality of the live probiotic bacteria. But there are other ways to enjoy Yakult. In the case of Yakult Singapore, they produce three other flavors of Yakult, orange, grape, and green apple. And of course, there's the Yakult Light, which has less sugar and calories. So in Singapore, the five bottle in one pack strip comes with two original flavors and one each of the fruity flavors. But why? That's because of competition. Yakult is facing fierce competition from a homegrown rival, Vitagen. In fact, these two have locked horns in Singapore's high court over trademark rights for the design. But so far, Yakult has been doing so well in all the markets it's in. Dr. Minoru Shirota, the inventor of Yakult, passed away on March 10, 1982, at 82 years old. Doing research on Dr. Shirota was challenging since there is not much said about his life. And it sucks because based on the reason why he created Yakult, it was because of his eagerness to keep people from getting sick. He just wanted to help as many people as possible. And considering that 40 million bottles of Yakult are consumed every day, Dr. Shirota must be pretty happy about what he's done. And so that's about it guys. Now you know about the brand origin story of Yakult. Hey guys, we rely heavily on word of mouth. So if you like this episode, please tell your friends about brand origins. We're still very small, so each like, each view, each follow, it means a lot to us. If you prefer the podcast version of this episode, just search for brand origins on Spotify. And if you want to say hi, we're also on Facebook and Twitter. This is Chris Garin, and I'll catch you again next time for another episode of Brand Origins.